God, I ask that your Holy Spirit speak through me, ask it in your name, and for your sake, amen. Beware of people who teach, quote unquote, works salvation, who backload works into the gospel. Beware of preachers who say you can lose salvation. Because if you could lose salvation, you would have to keep doing good works to stay saved. Matthew 23.15 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, speaking of these judgmental people that say you could lose your salvation, and others, like the Pharisees. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. John 6, 35-40 says, and this is a very good verse, is a very good set of verses to read to people who think that you can lose your salvation. John 6, 35-40 says, John 6, 35-40 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So once saved, always saved, is the gospel. When Eve said in Genesis 3.3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The devil said in Genesis 3.4, Ye shall not surely die. The works-based false preachers use the two verses above, Genesis 3.3-4, 3, 3 to 4, out of context to claim you could lose your salvation if you mess up after you are saved by Jesus. Adam and Eve, before they ate of the tree, would have never had to taste physical death, death of the body. But the wages of sin is death, as it says in Romans 6.23. So Genesis 3.3 was a warning from God that if Adam and Eve sinned, committed the sin of eating the fruit of the tree, they would have to taste physical death. But these verses in Genesis have nothing to do with losing their salvation. God never forsook Adam and Eve after they left the garden. Instead, God created the family lineage through them, which Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, and Jesus came. Though Jesus Christ was born on this earth to Mary, Jesus is God and has always been, as it says in John 1.1. 1, 1. But the point is that God never forsook Adam and Eve because of their sins. And God will never forsake you and take your salvation away from you. And Jesus makes once saved, always saved, plain in John 6, 37-40. Jesus said in John 19:30, It is finished. Which means that when He died on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day, that He paid the entire sin debt for anyone who sincerely calls out to Him to save them. Because you see, a person couldn't even sincerely call out to Jesus to save them unless the Father was drawing them to in the first place, as it says in John 6, 37. Jesus says in John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he or she that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In John 6, 47, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he or she that believeth on me hath everlasting life. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, 
through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is Christ. The gospel is a simple message. If you call out to Jesus honestly and sincerely to save you, He will save you and you can't lose your salvation. I want you to think about this logically. If you could lose your salvation, then you'd have to keep doing good works to stay saved and avoid any mistakes resulting in bad works. That's the false gospel that's the false gospel of works salvation and then salvation would be based on what you do instead of entirely on what Jesus did on the cross these false preachers their end will be according to their works as it says in 2 Corinthians 11 15 because they trust and are teaching others to trust in their works instead of God instead of in God these false preachers preach, quote-unquote, perseverance of the saints. It's a Calvinist backloaded gospel which says works are necessary to be saved and that what Jesus did on the cross to save you is not enough. That you have to, quote-unquote, add to your own works. You have to add, you have to, you have to, quote-unquote, add your own works to it to be saved, unquote. If you sincerely call out to Jesus to save you, he will work with you throughout your life to conform you more and more to Him. But your works do not save you. Instead, it is what Jesus did for you on the cross that saves you, that puts you right with God. We are saved by grace through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 65.5 says, talking about the Pharisees, people like that, it says, Which say, Stand by thyself, Come not near me, for I am holier than thou. These, these are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all day. The false preachers, too many times like the Pharisees, are fruit inspecting devils that point the finger and say you're not saved because you don't have enough works. Work salvation teachers and preachers need to be avoided. As it says in John 5.24, John 6, 35 to 40, and John 6, 47, and other places, once saved, always saved. If someone doesn't believe once saved, always saved, then they are an unbeliever that denies Jesus Christ's promise to us that we will have everlasting life by believing in Him. Remember the thief on the cross with Jesus who rebuked the other thief hanging beside Jesus on the cross. Didn't have, the thief didn't have time to do any good works, really. But Jesus said to the thief, because the thief believed in him, in Luke 23, 43, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. If you haven't already, I hope you will call out to Jesus to save you. When you sincerely call out to Jesus to save you, he will save you on the spot. You can't lose your salvation. Think of it like a credit card. When you, once you get saved, you're holding a, a credit card from God. And if you make a mistake and you fall short, then Jesus turns to God the Father and says, charge it to my account on Calvary. And Jesus will work through you your whole life once you get saved to conform you to Him. You'll be more and more like the way He wants you to be each day of your life. And at the end, you'll go meet Him in heaven, and he'll, the Father will look in your heart, and he'll see his Son there in your heart, and you'll live in heaven forever with them.